I wrote a story this week that I think is pretty tense. So I wanna talk about how I created that tension and give you some practical tips for writing tense scenes. So let's get started. The key to building tension, in my opinion, is conflict and how you approach it. The first thing to avoid here is just adding conflict to a scene and hoping that it's tense. Actual real conflict doesn't add tension, it sort of does the opposite. So a big fight or an argument will actually diffuse tension, so we want to make sure that we save that till the end. Tension is a build-up, it's a sense of impending conflict, so the more slowly and subtly we can build a sense of that, the more tense the story will be. We want the scene to feel like it could blow up at any moment. The way I always think of it is conflict plus time equals tension. Or is that conflict over time equals tension? Whatever the case, it's a combination of that stuff. To demonstrate what I mean, I want to talk about a story that I wrote this week about a police chief called Jim Colton. He's apprehended a killer, but he's behaving strangely about it. I started building tension in the very first line of this story. I wanted a sense of threat and conflict from the off, so I started with this first line. Jim Colton had a killer in his office, and an aspiring one outside. Why do I think this builds tension? Because it hints at conflict. We don't know anything about this story at this point, we don't know who Jim Colton is, but we do know he's got a killer in his office, and, you know, that can't be good. We also know from this opening that there's another potential killer just outside the office, and knowing that is really important too, because Tension is also about information. It's a delicate balance of letting both the readers and the characters know enough about what's going on, but not too much. If all the characters in our stories knew everything they needed to know, there'd be no tension whatsoever in those stories. We need to limit the amount of information that characters have, which will then limit the amount of information that the readers have in turn. Then we can start to drip feed important details. Enough to pique the reader's interest, but not enough to answer all their questions just the right amount so that we keep them on the edge of their seat. So, a little further into the story, when Jim Colton and the killer are sitting across from each other in his office, I chose to give a little bit more information. Colton had chosen not to cuff the guy. I'm giving information, but it doesn't actually answer any questions. In fact, it raises more. Does Jim Colton not know that he's sitting across from a killer? Or does he know, but he's chosen not to restrain him? The next thing I did to build tension is balance the characters. So Jim and the killer are sitting opposite each other. It's classic conflict positioning. We're talking Wild West Showdown, 3am neighbourhood cat standoff. It's tense, but it's not as tense as it could be because something's still a little bit off. One of these characters is a killer. The other is Jim Colton. Just... Jim. We need to give Jim a bit of a hand here because right now it seems like he's in a lot of danger. And while that can be tense, what I think would be more tense is if the scene was barely containing two opposing forces pushing against each other. We need to balance them out a bit. We need to bring poor Jim up a bit to balance the threat of this mysterious killer. So, in comes a side character to drip feed us a little bit more information to add to the tension. The blurred shape of Davy formed behind the glass of the office door and it opened a crack. Someone drunk was shouting at him in the background and he was doing his best to pretend he wasn't bothered by it. Need anything, Chief? A coffee or anyone you want me to call for you? Slight hesitation to his voice there. It feels like he hasn't really got a reason to be coming into the room, but he's going to do it anyway. Why? Jim says in response, No, we're all set, thank you, Davy. We're getting settled in here for a nice chat. Nice chat with a killer. Clearly there's going to be nothing nice about this chat, so why the weirdly peaceful tone? Cotton saw Davy's eyes dart to his revolver on the desk in front of him, next to his nameplate. Ah, Davy's worried about Colton's gun, which is lying right in front of him. So the scene seems a little bit more level now. We've given a little bit more information which has helped to balance things out. I've positioned the characters into a face-off, and now I've put something deadly in front of Colton, so those two opposing forces are a little more level. Meanwhile, there's this vague external threat of someone shouting in the next room. All of these elements are combining to build tension within the story, but none of them are giving away what's going to happen. We've now got an idea what Jim Colton's plans are. He seems to have some kind of violent intent, but that's confusing because he's supposed to be a policeman and his colleague is just right next door, so... There's questions there. But the killer, we've got no idea about his intentions because he hasn't said a word for the duration of the entire story. 
we've got no idea what he might be thinking. That's another great way to build tension in a story. Have an urgent need for a character to give information or say something, but then don't do it. Keep them silent. As it stands, this scene is pretty tense. It's definitely getting there, but to increase that tension further, I need to introduce something else that the reader doesn't know. Some other element that suddenly makes everything seem less stable than it was before. That's why Colton says this. The boy's dead. You should know that. I want you to know that. There's a suggestion of something more than just routine police work here. Tension begins to build a bit further. Still, the killer says nothing. Then Jim Colton says something else. He was my nephew. So, it's personal. Jim Colton has been wronged by this killer and he's not quite himself. That's perhaps why Davy was so hesitant to leave them alone together, especially in the presence of a gun. The gun which now sits in front of Colton, who has, of course, decided not to restrain the killer. All of this information I slowly drip fed into the story so that the reader doesn't feel like they have the whole picture at any time. They don't have all of the information that they need, and the scene that they're reading seems to be getting more and more dangerous as time passes. The killer is unrestrained, and he's been still and silent for the entire story. He could move at any time, and Jim Colton is barely containing his rage, and there's a gun in front of him. Colton placed his hand on the revolver. Everything's in place now. This conflict is primed and ready. Everything's in a delicate balance of tension. We just need one thing to tip the story over the edge. At this point in the story, I might have chosen to resolve the conflict one way or the other. I might have had Jim Colton shoot the killer, or the killer dive over the desk at Jim Colton, but I didn't want to end it that way. I wanted to build tension just a little bit further. But there wasn't really anywhere else I could go with two men in a face-off, so I needed to go outside of the room for the answer. Remember the aspiring killer shouting in the next room. Throughout the story, in the parts I haven't shown here, I built up an idea of this all taking place in a small, interconnected town where everyone knows everyone. I wanted there to be outside pressure on both Colton and the killer. So early on, I added an angry drunk in the next room, trying to get past Davy, trying to get to the killer who, by now, the entire town knows about. There was constant shouting and scuffling now out in the reception area. There's a bar across the road. Maybe you saw it when we brought you in. People blow off steam on Friday nights here. Everyone knows everyone. We're a small town. I wanted to add pressure here, some kind of time limitation for this face-off between Jim Colton and the killer, some outside force that could tip the balance at any moment. But for the tension to remain intact, as I said, I had to keep the pressure balanced on both Jim Colton and the killer. The killer is under pressure because there's an angry drunk trying to get to him from the next room, he's out for revenge and is in pretty much unknown quantity. Colton's under pressure because that drunk in the next room represents the entire town for him. All that drunk is doing is validating Colton's own rage and pushing him further and further towards doing something about it. So, as the story moved towards its close, I ramped up the tension one last time. I can't let you in here, Lawrence. It's, don't push me, all right? Davy's voice. The other two had been called in, but the road to town was probably still blocked. No other officers are coming. There'll be no intervention here. The drunk is going to get past Davy. It's just a matter of time. The gun had warmed now, under Colton's hand. He gripped it. Still, the killer said nothing. Hey, you, you can't go back there. Jim, they're coming. As the office door burst open, Colton raised the gun. That's where I ended the story. That was the peak of the tension. But I had options. I chose to cut off the tension here rather than resolve it. I didn't want to pay off all of that tension that I've been building up for the story because I wanted the ending to be somewhat open to interpretation. Did Jim Colton raise the gun to shoot the killer? or did he raise it to keep the oncoming drunk at bay? So if you're looking to carry that tension forward into the next part of your writing, don't pay it off, leave it there hanging, and then in the next bit, you can just pick it up and keep it going. If you're not carrying that tension forward, then pay it off then and there with the conflict that you've been building up to. So I'll shut up about Jim Colton now and give you a few more practical tips about building tension in a scene. The first tip is that quiet characters build tension. A quiet character that says way less than they need to is always going to be more tense than a character that just chatters non-stop. 
It adds mystery and it adds unpredictability. It makes the reader question what their motives are. Make sure your character has got some information that the reader knows that they have, but they're just not revealing it. And let your reader know there's consequences if they don't reveal it. Sound is actually great for building tension, but more specifically, the absence of sound. So think about a gunfight, loads of gunfire, followed by a sudden silence. Or a screeching alarm that's been blaring for hours, which suddenly goes off. What's caused the change? Why did the gunfire stop? Why did the alarm suddenly trail off? It raises questions and it makes the reader think something is about to happen. The next tip is that ignorance builds tension. Let your readers know something that your character doesn't so that they can watch your beloved character walk head on into a trap with no idea what's waiting for them. It's even better if your reader knows about the danger long before your character does so that they can just watch powerlessly for ages and not be able to tear their eyes away from what they're reading. If you want to practice writing a tense scene, why not try a flash fiction story like Jim Colton's? If you want to know where to start with flash fiction, I've got an online course all about that, links in the description. If you want to join a free, supportive community for writers, we have a Discord server available, link for that is in the description too. And finally, consider subscribing to this channel for more videos like this about writing every week. Thanks for watching, happy writing.